back last class we discussed about water quality standards and okay, the philosophy of water treatment and the general water treatment. Today we will continue with water treatment and I will be em emphasizing on point of use filters and all because many of the people in India uses this point of use filter. So, we will look into the treatment little more detail. So, uh, arsenic and fluoride problems exist across the world. Arsenic and fluoride contamination is a growing problem in, in many parts of the world. Okay, Argentina, Chile, China, India, Mexico, United States, Vietnam, Thailand and Bangladesh is having arsenic problem and worst cases in Bangladesh and West Bengal regions and fluoride problems are also existing in many parts of the world. For example, Africa, US, Europe and Asia, worst cases in India and China. So, uh, what I will do is, I okay, will give some idea about how can we remove this one for the domestic, okay, from the drinking water. So, population affected if you see the arsenic around 4.5 to 6.9 million people are routinely exposed to arsenic okay, through drinking water and when it comes to fluoride around 25 million people across 17 states are affected by fluorosis. Okay, fluorosis is the uh, state when you take fluoride for a long high concentration of fluoride for a long period of time. 66 million people are at risk of fluorosis in India. Okay. So, environmental sources of arsenic and fluoride, okay, you may be thinking that it is because of industrial contamination, okay, most of the cases it is not. Okay. Arsenic and fluoride occurs naturally in the environment as a mineral in combination with other elements. So, many times it is natural origin, okay. but agricultural and industrial activities also can contribute arsenic and fluoride. Okay. So, arsenic is present in wood preservatives, paints, dyes, metals, trucks, soaps and semiconductors, certain fertilizers and animal feed, feeding operations, pesticides, weed killers and ro rodenticides, copper smelting, mining and coal burning. All these things are the industrial operations or anthropogenic operation which can Okay, okay, which uses arsenic and naturally the waste com or waste solid waste or liquid waste coming from that one will be containing arsenic and when it comes to fluoride, phosphate or production, aluminium manufacturing, steel manufacturing etc. Okay, all these activities okay, involve fluoride. So, the biggest problem because earlier I was telling you okay, the physical parameters we can see that one easily, but both arsenic and fluoride does not have any smell, taste or color even at high concentrations. So, what is happening is okay, the analytical facilities are not available in all parts. So, what happens okay, people are not aware of the arsenic and fluoride presence in their water many times unless there is a frequent water quality monitoring. So, many people are getting exposed to this one. So, we will see okay, what are the methods we can use for okay, fluoride removal. Defluoride, defluoridation is the word Okay, use for removal of excess fluoride in drinking water. As per the B B Bureau of Indian Standards, the permissible fluoride concentration in water is 1 milligram per liter and arsenic is around 0 0.01 milligram per liter, okay, very, very low concentration. So, defluoridation methods, there are different methods, okay, one is based on some kind of precipitation. So, when we precipitate okay, the uh, uh, fluoride Okay, will be getting adsorbed to the uh, precipitate. Another one is based upon adsorption process, you use different types of adsorbents like bond char, activated alumina, amorphous alumina, activated carbon, calcite, clay, zeolite, charcoal, bleaching uh, earth and red mud. All these things can be used as adsorbents. Then okay, contact precipitation and improved method of precipitation then based upon membrane processes many times reverse osmosis process is used to remove fluoride it will be removing fluoride to a great extent then based on ion exchange process you use ion exchangers there the fluoride is getting exchanged with other anions and the fluoride will be getting removed. So, if you want to remove fluoride you have to use anion exchange resins and for arsenic removal also most of these methods can be used. So, the precipitation method one is lime treatment. So, what we do calcium hydroxide and 
or magnesium you will be getting magnesium hydroxide precipitate fluoride is getting okay, attaches to the precipitate okay, by enmeshment. So, what you have to do take the bucket full of water add the chemicals allow it to settle and you take the okay, supernatant okay, it will most of the time the fluoride concentration will be coming down within the permissible limit. Another one is adsorption the most commonly used adsorbent for fluoride removal is activated alumina. Okay, so, this is a picture of a hand pump attached to attachable defluoridation unit. So, what is this is the activated carb, uh, activated alumina. So, this is the hand pump the water is coming here and it is passing through the filter okay, made up of activated carbon activated alumina. Here this activated alumina is acting as the adsorbent. So, the fluoride will be getting adsorbed on the activated alumina. So, pure water will be coming here and that can be used for the drinking purpose. So, here what happens when we use the adsorption process with respect to time in the adsorption capacity of the adsorbent will be getting reduced. So, in between you have to take it and regenerate it okay, for okay, further removal. So, so, this is one of the method okay, this is a hand pump attached unit and there are many household filters available for the acidic removal. So, here you this is a candle filter type of a thing and there are some filters okay, it is filled with activated alumina and you can pour the water and you will be getting the treated water in the bottom. And another method is I told you reverse osmosis ok. What is osmosis? If you have a salt solution and clean water separated by a membrane. So, what will happen? The clean water will be passing through the membrane to the salt solution until the osmotic pressure of both the solutions become almost identical. In reverse osmosis okay, what we are doing? We are exerting pressure here in salt solution okay, so that the clean water from the salt will be passing through the membrane okay, and you will be getting the clean water. So, this that is why this is getting the name reverse osmosis. It is the just opposite to the osmosis process. So, uh, and okay, many community and uh, uh, central treatment units are available, but in India many people are using point of use filters okay, installed at single water connection system near kitchen or bathroom or sink. So, okay, so we will discuss about what are the different types of point of use filters available in India. Okay. So, again point of use filters are the filters installed in a single water connection system near kitchen or bathroom and it will it, its capacity is low smaller systems filter at point where it is being used Life, lifetime of the filter is generally varies from 3 months to 1 year many times we have to remove the media or the membrane or whatever depending upon what type of a filter point of use filters you are using. So, when we talk about this point of use filters there are different varieties okay when you use the sunlight treatment system also all these technologies are available but nowadays it is made to point of use filters so gravity based water purifiers reverse osmosis based water purifiers uv based water purifiers ultra filtration based water purifiers multi stage universal water water purifier okay okay that means a combination of many of these things so we'll see one one by one in detail Point of use filters, okay, gravity based water filters uses simple sedimentation technology where water moves from high pressure to the low pressure, require a filter for removing microorganisms, suspended solids and some extent of dissolved solids. The most commonly used gravity filter okay, consists of two layers sand and activated carbon. The sand will be acting as a filter media, so it will be removing your turbidity and some amount of microorganisms and all and the activated carbon will be removing the organic matter and the uh, taste and order causing compounds. So, once the filter filtration is over whatever the water is coming out you can collect it and disinfect during, uh, using chlorine or any, uh, any other methods and use it okay this water will be very safe and okay, many times this gravity based filters are economically okay, very cheap and Okay, the most commonly used gravity based filters are the biosand filters okay, they are okay, very slow fluoride is employed and the water is getting uh, filtered through that one 
and those filters will be having a thin bacterial layer in the top of the filter. So, that one will be taking care of the organic matter also. So, we will see the pros and cons do not require electricity for filtering, low cost I told you 1000 to 4000 ok. Even if you go for smaller size the cost can be still uh, lower and easy, easy to maintain ok, portable and easy to use cons ok, cannot kill pathogens from water that is what I was mentioning after this one you have to ok, give disinfection not capable to remove heavy metals if your water is contaminated with industrial effluents and all uh, this filter will not be sufficient to meet the water quality parameters mercury, arsenic, fluoride, nitrate ok, TDS etcetera cannot be removed by gravity based filters. Now, we will see RO water purifier most of the people are ok familiar with the, this one this is based on reverse osmosis technique most commonly used filters in households and companies can remove heavy metals arsenic, fluoride, mercury, nitrate, fluoride etcetera. The problem is ok reverse osmosis filters will be removing all the dissolved minerals in the water. So, the water will be free of all the minerals. So, that such water may not be good for our health. So, remineralization of the RO treated water is very very essential. Okay, so, many times it is not being used okay, done. So, if you continuously drink this water there may be health effects. So, what are the advantages can be used for treating high TDS water and can treat salty water, hard water or bore well water. Okay, what are the disadvantages requires electricity, require high maintenance cost okay, around 50 percentage of the water is getting wasted and cannot kill pathogens after the RO filtration also it is advisable to have a disinfection system. So, now coming to UV water purifier ok. So, UV water purifier is only meant to uh, do the disinfection ok. It will not be able to remove your uh, heavy metals or any other things. So, here what we uh, what it does is uses ultraviolet radiation to kill pathogens they do not remove dissolved solids does not cause corrosion of water ok. So, most of the time if you are going for UV water purifier you have to have some pre treatment to your remove your turbidity and other contaminant present in the things. So, we will see what are the advantages of this system remove various pathogens like bacteria and viruses water is not wasted like uh, uh, RO water purifier does not require any chemicals no change in taste cost effective require less maintenance at disadvantages require electricity does not remove solids and ultra filtration water purifier ok. So, this is another system ultra filtration water purifier uses ultra filtration membrane to purify water this purifiers remove pathogens like bac bacteria and suspended solids it will not be able to remove uh, total dissolved solids. So, we will see the advantages and disadvantages here ok they require less quantity of electricity can remove pathogens and suspended solids may not be completely you have to go for disinfection if you want to be 100 percent safe. Long lasting and low in maintenance disadvantages cannot remove dissolved solids can be used to remove water with low TDS and it cannot remove toxic ions etcetera. Then multi stage universal water purifier ok this is a combination of 2 3 processes whatever we have discussed there are RO plus UV available RO plus UV plus ultra filtration plus RO plus U UV ok pre post activated carbon ok ultra filtration RO and UV. So, all these combinations now what I am trying to tell is ok you cannot tell the ok tell that this is the treatment system we can adopt for any type of water ok. We have to look into the water quality raw water quality and the water quality water treatment system should be tailor made ok because one water raw water quality will be varying from the other. So, the treatment required will be entirely different. So, according to the treatment uh, the wa raw water quality you have to identify what what is the proper type of point of use treatment system you have to adopt. So, point of use ok how it is working ok remove ok. So, this is raw water it is not a first arrow raw water will be going to ultra filtration 
okay, it will be removing the okay, turbidity and all, then it will, it will go to RO, RO will be removing TDS, okay, first it will enter in the UF, then RO, then to, okay, then to UV. So, that is the way, okay, you will be arranging the filter. So, that this will be removing all the contaminants, UF will be removing your turbidity and, okay, uh, to a certain extent the uh, bacteria, etc. And RO will be removing your TDS and UV will be removing the remaining bacteria and viruses. So, multi-stage universal water purifier, what are the advantages? Can be used to treat any type of water without compromise, compromising the quality of output water, remove all kinds of impurities like pathogens, harmful salts, toxic chemicals and heavy metals and dead cells, okay. disadvantages, require electricity relatively higher maintenance cost, need to add mineral, minerals in the treated water and lot of wastage of water will be there because around 50 percentage of the water will be okay, wasted in the RO unit. So, what extent of treatment, okay, whether we can, okay, either we can go for highly sophisticated or we can go for low cost and easy to practice technologies. Okay. So, easy to practice technologies like this, okay, this is the biosan filter, okay. most of the contaminants will be getting removed here if it is not having heavy metals and other toxic compounds. Okay. If you have only turbidity, some color, taste etc., this type of a filter will be able to remove that one and whatever the treated water is coming, you can disinfect and use. So, what I am trying to tell is, okay, blindly you do not have to go for RO and other treatment, okay, depending upon the water quality if necessary. Okay, go for the such treatment, otherwise low cost treatment systems are more than sufficient to meet the water quality. I'll show you some example, how can we give education and awareness to improve the water quality significantly. So, I told you water quality analysis is very, very important, but in many parts of our country, okay, the sophisticated labs are okay, not accessible for many of the population. So, because they are very costly and very few numbers are available. So, easy to monitor water quality test kits, if you can uh, deploy them and give some sort of a training to the people, okay, the awareness about the water quality, the diseases etcetera will be increasing and that alone can improve the water quality significantly. I will show one example, okay, the project whatever we have done. So, IIT Matras has developed a water quality test kit with the help of okay, financial support from UNICEF. So, what we have done is we have developed the water quality test kit and okay, uh, use this water quality test kit to give training to okay, many panchayas in uh, two districts of Tamil Nadu. Okay, what we have done? We have done the training, uh, given the training to panchayat president, panchayat secretary and uh, three volunteers from each panchayat. So, after the training what they were doing is, they were going and taking all the drinking water samples from the, from the villages where, from the, the, where they are coming and the results they were uh, reporting to the panchayats. So, this is the action taken by the volunteers, panchayat presidents. Volunteers monitored all the water sources in the panchayat used for drinking purpose using the water quality test kit and one tenth of the sample analysis were cross checked by IIT or the water supply board or toad board to have quality control. The results are presented in the panchayat level consultative committee. Volunteers pressurized the authorities to take necessary action as and when needed because they could see the water quality, how it is changing and they know what is the quality okay, need to be there. So, they were pressurizing the authorities. If there is a broken pipe for repair, cleaning of the water tanks, okay, wherever chlorination is not done, do the chlorination uh, frequently, then other repair works, cleaning the surroundings of water sources and water tanks. Very simple community ways activities they have done. So, when we started the training, okay, so this is the present substance test we were doing. So, this is the water quality, okay, uh, uh, existed there. That means, majority of the water sources were Okay, contaminated by fecal coliforms. So, the water was okay, contaminated. So, we started the, we have given the test and every bi-monthly we used to go there to test the, uh, check the results and what is going on.
So, you can see that during the training period, okay, this is July 10, around 72 percentage of the water samples were contaminated. Then the people started okay, checking the water quality and taking corrective measures. Corrective measures means only cleaning and repairing the things, no other infrastructural things. You can see that the contamination level is coming down from 72 to okay, 44, 43, 42. 38. So, wherever they are seeing that the water quality is not good, they go and take the action and again go back and check it. So, you can see that within okay, one year or one, okay, one and a half years, okay, from 72 percentage, the bacteriological contamination has come down to 7 percentage without any infrastructural thing. Okay, by just creating awareness among the people, educating the people and provi providing them with easy to use water quality test kit, which anybody can use. So, what I am trying to tell is just educating and creating awareness and give them, give the people, the common people okay, with some testing tools, then the water quality, whatever they are consuming on daily basis can be improved significantly. So, here you can see how the bacteriological quality is coming down. So, and uh, after doing the studies, we have gone to, okay, I told you we have done the study in two different districts okay, and around uh, 190 panchayats or something like that and we have gone to the, the uh, public health center of this panchayats and we have looked into the disease uh, history. Okay, we have given the training in 2010. You can see that before that one, what was the disease occurrence, waterborne diseases and after the training, you can see that the disease has come down. Okay, there is a decrease in the diseases. Okay, this is the secondary data we have collected from the uh, primary health centers, but it is very clear that the number of waterborne diseases has okay, decreased in all these PHEs. We have done in many places, I am representing only one picture. So, we have looked into the incidences of cholera, typhoid, dysentery, diarrhea, all these things are all these diseases are waterborne diseases. That means the diseases are occurred because of consuming contaminated water. What I am trying to tell is by providing education, awareness and testing kids, okay, we will be able to improve the water quality significantly. So, this is another uh, block. Here also you can see the same trend, okay, the number of waterborne diseases are decreasing significantly after the training. That means, when the awareness is increased, the things are improving significantly. So, major problems encountered in the villages are illegal conne connections in many parts. Pump operators, tank cleaners are not getting their salary, hence no motivation to do the job. Okay. So, many places we have seen that the tanks were not cleaned for 2 years, 3 years, lot of slush was accumulated in the uh, this one. Non-availability or inadequate quantity of chlorine, misconcept about chlorination, they are thinking that chlorination need to be done only once in 15 days, that is not the case. Whenever you are pumping fresh water to the tank, you have to do the chlorination, then only it will be getting disinfected. Okay, many places we could see inactive panchayat presidents. So, summary about water supply, what we have to do? 24 by 7 supply of good quality water at a reasonable price is essential. Proper water pricing is essential, then only the system will improve. Equitable distri distribution in water supply and again, an integrated approach of water quality, hygiene and sanitation is essential to have a sustainable solution for providing safe drinking water to all. Okay? With this one, I am stopping my class. Thank you.